Nick Deck, how are you, sir? Really good, man. Really good. How are you? You know, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. So, so Nick, you are uh, an MSP marketing person. Well, per, you know, you're you're you run uh, Heroes of Marketing. You're the yep. CEO, lead advisor, and I see that you you've been helping MSPs with marketing for like a decade. Yeah, um, we have a. I have a, a pretty um, <laughs> a pretty elite team of, uh, of marketers that, in, in the last couple of years, we've um, been focusing ex- exclusively on MSPs. And um, I spent the last oh, it's got to be it's got to be over a decade now working uh, working with MSPs and other professional service businesses and. Um, you know, in the last last couple of years, last, since about 2018, we've been exclusively working with MSPs and and helping them uh, helping them understand how to market their unique businesses. That's fantastic, man. So, with um, with you working with with strictly MSPs now, um, I, I've got to ask, like, what what are you seeing that works? Um, that's honestly the same things, the same core principles and the strategies behind marketing and MSP before COVID, before all that, it's, it's, they still hold true today. Um, so what we're seeing is that most MSPs and most businesses in general, to be honest, they come, uh, they come to the table and they kind of, when they do that, when they try marketing, they sort of shout at people, Hey, look at me, buy my service. And mm-hmm. people are so deaf to that stuff now, like people don't care about how good you are, if that's all you're telling them. So one of the, the key differentiators between what we do and what a lot of other agencies do is that we really help work with, um, work with the MSPs and with leadership to help develop a, an understanding of what they can do differently, how, what they can offer people that we can then promote um, to reach people early on, earlier on in the in their buyer's journey, earlier on in their decision making process. So um, that's that's the big one. Like reaching people before they understand they have a problem is huge. Before they're they because there's a, you know there's only a small segment of the market that understands I need an MSP, I need IT support, I need this this vendor to help me. You know there's a, a very small segment. If you can branch out into the middle and the top of the funnel where you can cast this wide net. Then you have an opportunity to to reach them earlier on before they've got this sales guard up and before they've got, you know, before they're deaf to that sort of messaging and you get a chance to build a relationship and establish trust and get people to like you. And, you know, it, it's uh, it, it helps people just kind of glide through the sales process. It's not such a hard sell. So I'm going to I'm going to share my screen here because I've got to say I'm really impressed by your website. Thank you. I'm I'm gonna reload this because I um I want everyone to see the the beauty and all of the animations that you guys have going on here. Uh, and me being a website nerd, I want to look at the page source because I'm dying to know what it was built with. I'll, I can tell you, but you can figure that. I see out. you're hosting it on SiteGround. I see you're using Elementor. It's exactly what my stack looks like. Cool. Yeah, it's um, a sharp man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, we, you know, our our website is basically just a, it. It tells our story about who we are and what we do, and it sums it all up. We don't dive real deep into, uh, you know, we don't use we don't use it as a a sales tool as much. We just want people to know like what they're getting when they when they contact us, and. Um, you know, a big part of what I was just talking about is a big part of what's represented there on the website. It's it's all about helping people earlier on in their in their decision making process. So, huh. yeah, we, we like this storytelling of of, uh, of a good website. So, so yeah, this is honestly, and this is fantastic looking. Um, I I'm all all about the storytelling experience on websites. And honestly, for marketing in general, I think that, you know, when you get to tell a story, um, you're, you're doing something engaging with people. Absolutely. And, 
And I even like that your menu, it's like weird looking, but you know, in a good way. Yeah. I mean, you still know what it is, but it's still a little different. Everything's a little funky on the site. Like there's, there's some stuff um, that is a little like the, the guarantee where that pops in when you, when you scroll past that, it's a little obnoxious. It comes in and you, it shakes in front of you. It, it only does it on the first, first load, but mm-hmm. you know, but it gets your attention and it, it, it's effective. So we want people to know that we guarantee our work. I mean, if you offer something like that, that should be one of the top things they, under, they take away from your website. And um, you know, it's a, it's a, a strong message. Even even if you have to sh- shake it out in front of them and get make sure that they they catch that as they're scrolling by. That's really cool, man. So, so what does what does a marketing? I'm going to call it a marketing campaign. You know, the entire engagement that that is heroes of marketing. What does this look like when we start working with you guys? No, so really, it's it's not all that different to what an MSP does for their clients. So we're essentially, you pay a set rate. You know, when we go through our sales process, we identify what you want to accomplish, what it's going to take to get, to get you there. And we sort of prescribe a, a, uh, a game plan of strategy for you. And, and then we sign you up for a set fee every month that you can build in like a predictable cost. You can build into your, your budget. Um, you know, that gets you a certain amount of work every month. And it's, it's for us, it's not, not, uh, not a hour billable hours thing. It's built based on value. It's, it's a point system. And so, but you get basically all of your, your marketing needs met based on the unique requirements of your business and the unique goals that we discussed during the sales process and in the onboarding process. So, um, you know, we're, we're a full scope marketing, marketing team. So we, we do it all, but really what we do, what we focus on early on is building out these funnels that, uh, that help promote our clients offers. Um, and these, these offers are what we were talking about earlier, where, where you're really coming up with something of incredible value. You know, the, the typical MSP offer is some sort of through a 30 minute IT consultation, something that, that really isn't, it's kind of boring, not very sexy, not very intriguing. And if you promote that, you might get the occasional person taking action on that and the occasional conversation started. But we come up with people, well, excuse me, we work with people to come up with offers that are, are of insane value, incredible value, really, really highly engaging, highly enticing offers um, so that people get a ton of upfront value and they get something tangible, something awesome during that, during that process. Um, they have a reason that a compelling reason to take action on, on an advertisement or on a, a sales page or something like that and give you their information and schedule some, some time with you. Um, and then, you know, we, we work on the, the rest of that. So because we're not strictly bottom of the funnel, um, we're reaching people before they might be completely ready to make a, a purchase decision, a buying decision. So we work on all the nurture that helps them understand the value of working with your company and, and all the reasons that they need to be um, need to be engaged with your business and and everything that we do after uh, your offer is delivered points back toward the a sales conversation, but in a way that's constructive and and um, helpful. You know, not not so much like buyer stuff now. That's really cool, man. So. With with uh, what you guys are doing, are you finding that there is a particular medium that works best, whether it's web, social? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, we've got different channels for different stages in the funnel. So like they're in different activities, different initiatives. Um, we find that social is really good for reaching people earlier on. Like if you're in the top of the bottom, top of the funnel, middle of the funnel. Um, Social gives a gives us a platform to have a compelling ad with a decent amount of copy and a nice visual and get get somebody engaged and and you know click them through to a a a sales page and get them get them engaged earlier on um, and then we back all that up we we have sort of a, a safety net as you will if you will at the bottom of the funnel and that's for all the people that are actively looking for for IT services so. We've got, you know, you you just got to use different platforms based on how you can, how we, how and when you can reach people most effectively. 
So, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn are great social platforms. There's a lot of, uh, you can get a lot of engagement going on Facebook. You can target really, really uh, specific niches. Like we have a client that worked with, uh, what was there like uh, biomedical testing, you know, so, it's something that's, it's difficult to, to get real, real specific on, uh, on Facebook, but like LinkedIn provides you with, with that sort of stuff and in, um, in their targeting. So you just, you know, it's all about understanding um, how to use each platform most effectively because they all work synergistically. They all work at, you know, at, you can use them as, as a, a part of one cohesive machine, but just understanding which which parts to use when is is uh, is the key there. I like it. So uh, sorry for the cat; she's very needy this afternoon. I'm, a, I'm an animal lover, man. I got three dogs and and a house full of, of animals growing up. So that's awesome. Uh, yeah. I love this cat. I, I she's very much like a dog. She um she hates cats. She loves dogs. She <laughs> likes to play fetch. She's really? like a lap kitty. Oh, so as you as you see, she's like, please just pet me more. You're not <laughs> petting me. She's like, you're not petting me good enough. Here's my butthole. Yeah, this is literally what she's doing to me right now. That's so, <laughs> all right, so. When uh, when you say you're building funnels, are you? Would you say that you're building more than one funnel for a particular client? Absolutely. So here's, I actually have a diagram, kind of what it looks like, and I can share that if that. If that's, yeah, absolutely. Let me pull that up really quickly. Um, so yeah, we're building out multiple funnels. So like, we build out funnels that are focused on uh, where we go vertical specific. And, you know, because it's so much easier to connect with a, with an audience, if you're speaking their language, if you're speaking to their pain points, if you go general small business, it's difficult to, to, to speak to a lawyer who understands the impact that they're saving, um, the cost, the cost benefits of saving, you know, three billable hours per, per attorney per day or something like that. You can speak to a lawyer much more, much differently and much more effectively than you can to a, you know, a general small business. You can speak Absolutely. to a private practice doctor or an accountant, a CPA, same way. Um, let me see here. I'm just pulling this up here. I should have this, should have this prep, but it's Sorry, one of these. Man. So while, while you're looking that up, I had a really great conversation with uh, uh, someone earlier. This is my second podcast recording today. Oh. And um the, the conversation we had earlier is I, I asked kind of the devil's advocate question. Do yeah. you think that we as MSPs are providing a mission critical service to businesses? And they, of course, said yes. And then I said, so why don't we get to bill ours uh, at prices like, you know, what attorneys and CPAs <laughs> get to charge? Because I know, I know some attorneys, they're charging, you know, 400, 600 and substantially more per hour for, you know, the, the senior attorney or, uh, you know, managing partner or, or whatever, whatever yeah. fancy title they want to give themselves, you know? So uh, what about you guys is, I mean, you, you know, your website looks like you, you've got, you know, 600 an hour, kind of rates so are you are you charging a premium because you know that what you guys are providing is worth it so yes and no um we have a i came from a background where i I, I worked in a couple agencies before this and they're really sophisticated agencies top level but they were charging an arm and a leg for stuff that you know that the cost the cost benefit was just it wasn't there as far as we could see. You know, I, I, I didn't feel like it was fair. We were being sort of forced to sell really high ticket marketing uh, or high, you know, high cost programs for what I, I didn't see that it lined up for people. So my mission was to, to provide certainly a level of a greater level of value for the cost that people are paying. So um, one thing that I really enjoy about 
working with MSPs is that I work with a lot of uh, a lot of MSP owners that are doing. Um, they're still kind of running the show, and and they're, I work with a lot of CEOs of. Um, I want to call them small MSPs, but you know, million dollar businesses. Whereas, like, I have seven and eight figure clients, but I work with a lot of smaller guys who it really has an impact on their business. Um, you know, like if we can help them grow double the size of their business, they can hire more people. They can actually enjoy the business that they built. They can step out of it a little bit more, focus on operations instead of like putting out fires and, and just holding it, holding it all together. Um, so my, I have, um, I don't have a great way of describing our, our sales process and our, but we have, we sort of prescribe the, the need, we prescribe based on the need of the client. So like if a small guy comes to me and I just want to help them out, we can put together a really nice and affordable program for them. If a, if an eight figure like larger MSP comes to us and they just want a full service agency to do every single thing that they want, we can put together a program like that for them. You know, if we want, um, if the small guy asks for a branded letterhead or a, you know, something silly like that, that's not going to impact their, their revenue. I'm going to tell them no. But if the big guys tell us like, Hey, I need, you know, I need you to do a birthday card for my kids or birthday invitation for my kid's birthday party. I'm going to say, go for it. Like you, well, we're doing all the stuff that that's impacting your, your lead sales and revenue. And we can, we can take that on as well. It's not going to, you know, not going to impact our ability to perform for you. So um, that's a long way of saying it. I, I, we can absolutely help the smaller guys. I mean, there's, there's certainly a level that's too small. Um, they just, you know, it's tough for these guys to afford a few thousand dollars in marketing each month, but, uh, but we can, we can do it all. We can do a lot for people. So, so you, it sounds like you kind of alluded to your, your pricing. It sounds like it's a few thousand dollars a month to, to work with you guys. Yeah. It's, it's gonna, it's gonna be around, um, you know, on the, it, it, it depends on how quickly you want to get there too. You know, if you sure. want to get operational in, in 30 days and have, have your funnel built out and your ads running, it's going to cost a few thousand dollars. If you don't mind waiting a couple of months to get that built out and to, um, and to, to do the optimi- optimizations more slowly and, and sort of build the, the pieces onto the machine more slowly, it's going to be, um, you know, we can, we can work with you. But for the most part, if, if there are, um, if there are companies that will approach us that are too small, I'll, I, I teach people how to do it themselves. Like I wrote a book on this. Um, if people are willing to put in the work, I hand them off the book and they, they go and do everything. They can go and do everything that we do for clients on their own. Like I, I spell it out. It's 200 pages. Like it's spelled it out line by line. That's really cool. Yeah. So is this, is this a book I can get on Amazon or something? Where do I go, man? Like I just, I, I haven't, promoted it except for in, in my own funnel. Um, so I, I do need to go put it on Amazon. That's something that one of my marketing mentors has demanded of me and I haven't done yet. It's one of those things like the, the cobbler's kids would get the, get no shoes here. You know, they just, our business marketing, our, our business has been fortunate enough to, to have a steady stream of leads and clients and prospects coming towards us, uh, coming at us for since we, since we've been operating. Um, and so I haven't, I haven't dedicated a ton of time to those little things, but I, I can absolutely get um, anybody a, a copy of the book that, that wants it. That's what it's for. It's for all the people that need it and can't afford to hire somebody else to do it. I would, uh, I, I'm putting my, my email in the chat here just in case you didn't have it. I'd love a copy of it, man. Absolutely. Just because I, I think it would be neat to see, you know, what are, what are Nick's secrets? We want the secret sauce. Absolutely, man. And, it, and I, I think it's fair to say, you know, just about any service, including IT stuff, you know, these these aren't things that are maybe not necessarily all the IT things, but you know what I mean? Like, these aren't rocket science. You know, if someone's willing to put in the time and effort into not only learning it, but then doing it, yeah. you know, anyone can figure out how to do this kind of stuff. I and agree. This, um, the way you've got this laid out, it almost looks like uh, Infusionsoft with all the arrows going different directions and everything. Everybody's got a version of funnel mapping these days. This is a product called Funnelytics. I mean, there's, there's Guru and I think uh, Soho even has their own funnel mapping software now. So this is just, this is one of the options. 
this is just an uh, example of, of our funnel. Like everybody that we work with gets a, a variation of this. Um, but basically we've got a, some sort of down, I'm going to, I'm going to run through this with a security example, because I think that's pretty ubiquitous. Everybody's got a security offering as a part of their, their, uh, program. Um, but basically we help people create multiple offers for multiple stages of the funnel. One, the first one is very low barrier to entry. Like what we would recommend is something like a security training deck. It's a slide deck where people can download it and present it to their team and they can get end users trained up on, on best practices to avoid, you know, um, fraudulent emails mostly like that. There's a, it's, it's, a you know, password, password, uh, strengthening, things like that. Like basic, basic things that are going to save them. If, if their team can, um, you guys know, I don't need to, I don't, I'm preaching to the choir here, but it's a, it's an end user training deck. Um, and so people, we, we promote that with, um, you know, usually it's social ads. They get to a sales page here. Let me annotate so you can see where I'm pointing. I, I see the mouse. Okay. So they get to a sales page here. If they don't opt in, if they, they are in show interest and they don't opt in, they're retargeted on both Google and Facebook. So we're promoting it largely on Facebook there. If they do opt in, immediately they get an option for, to have um, option, offer number two. Often that is a, it depends on the resources of the company. Often that could be having one of the techs come out and do the training for the business. The whole point is to get boots on the ground, like face-to-face -face conversation started, get the, the, the relationship established. So um, you're showcasing your expertise, you're, you're building that relationship with a potential client. Um, but often that's a, you know, like that could be a free training. This could also be some sort of security guide, for example, and this could be a consultation to help them like a legitimate 60 to 90 minute consultation to help them improve their security process. It, it could also be a, um, you know, a lot of guys are doing risk assessments and security audits and things like that. And, not necessarily promoting them in as a part of a funnel. They're just, you know, it, it, um, but it's a good, it's a good offer. And then you do a consultation around what, what people can be doing, what action they can be taking to remedy those issues. Um, we also have, so if they, if they don't take action on that, that second offer, if they only want the downloadable, the, the low barrier to entry offer, then we, um, they just head to a thank you page. And if, and that's where they, they get a, an email and that get, they get their slide deck or their, their downloadable. And then we send that we, that automatically enters in them, uh, enters them into a series of emails as well as prompts us to retarget them to, to get back to this offer. Ultimately, we want to have the goal here is to have this second offer because that's the offer where you get some face to face time, you get the conversation started, you get some, uh, you know, you get access to the people who are going to begin to know, like, and trust you, which is really the, the basis of them buying from you. Um, if they do opt in for when they do opt in from that second offer, then they actually get sent an application because this is our, our disqualification process. Obviously, you don't want um, a lot of these bigger shops don't want mom and pop shops uh, taking part in, in a resource intensive offer like this. So... You send them a quick application. It's 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 a uh, uh, friendly, um, you know, high level business information, but it gives you enough to un to understand the needs of the company as well as qualify whether or not they're they're a good fit for yours. Um, if they're unqualified, what we'll do in that is usually package up some an email with some content, some some recommendations for another vendor, um, just like a nice friendly out. If they are qualified, that's when you actually schedule your your training, your in-person training, your consulting, whatever that that second offer is. And then after that, that's that's really not a, a position for a sales conversation. That's because we promote that as something that's just about providing value. Um, after that, they that's when you get the chance to to if you if you're uh, at the scale or you have an in-house salesperson or you, or you are the salesperson. That's where you enter into like a manual follow-up process where you're going over the, the items that, uh, that you've uncovered in your audit or the, the just um, security best practices that, they, that you notice that they had not implemented, things that they, you, you know that they need help with and, and following up um, as a part of your, your sales process. 
They also get a, a series of emails that is covering sort of the same thing. And then in the last year, we started testing direct mail to sort of su to support that process. And at scale, direct mail is not very cost effective because it's just a blanket, uh, a blanket targeting. You know, you're just hitting everybody with. It. But if you have a, a really targeted piece of direct mail, and you're just sending out a few, you know, one one or two pieces to a single company, and just re readdressing it, then it becomes a really effective. It's a, a physical, tangible reminder of uh of their their time with you and this is this is when you can you can, you can start adding things in like your um there's i got that we've got we can go into detail about the direct mail part but there's uh you can do case study packets and testimonial or like all sorts of cool stuff here but everything's pointing towards a sales conversation and that's the reason that we do do funnels like this is because everybody starts with basically here everybody starts with have a sales conversation with us and there's only a handful of people at any given time that are ready to have that sales conversation whereas there are a ton of people who don't yet know they have a problem they have a problem they don't let you know they have a problem and need to be sort of shown they have a problem and then need to also have be building trust with the the solution to that problem, the provider of the solution to that problem along the way. So this is a this is the long play. Um, you know, we have you can we have, like I said, we back it up with with Google AdWords and things like that that are and we do bottom of the funnel Facebook ads and things like that that are um, specifically targeting people who are searching for IT support and managed services and things like that, like the you know the obvious keywords. But we th this is what's going to open that. This is this is AdWords and 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 uh, you know really specific keywords down here. The rest of the funnel opens it up here. So you've got this big wide net you can cast and reach a lot more businesses, a lot more people who uh, way earlier in their their buyer's journey and their their buying process. One thing that I find really. Um... <laughs> frustrating with with adwords is we as msps we know what this stuff's called so <laughs> you know we we want to put like keywords in for or key phrases like manage services cleveland ohio but like what what are people really searching for cuz i know it's not bdr or managed bdr or you know like how how do we know what people are actually looking for? So there are are like we have a sort of running lists of of like keywords that are in, more in lay terms. You know, you've you've got you've got the managed services understanding of of what the problem and solution are, and then you've got you've got to just put yourself in the perspective of the person who's making the search. Um, search intent is everything in in all in, in organic, uh, like in SEO and in, in paid search. Um, if you, you know, there's a lot of people who write content for search terms that don't write directly relate, relate to their business. Um, same goes for, for AdWords. They, they think that um, because they, like if they throw the keyword in there, it's going to get clicks and it's going to drive traffic to their, their ads or their, their landing pages, things like that. But you have to, you have to understand why somebody would be searching for that. You know, you have to understand what people are, first of all, what people are actually searching for and why people are searching for it. Because if they're, if you're not the, the solution to the problem they're trying to fix, you're just wasting money. And I think and that's something that we see a lot. People have a ton of keywords and they're getting a lot of clicks, but their clicks aren't resulting in, in a driving calls. They're not, you know, they're not booking sales conversations. So that's, that's the big problem is just understanding putting yourself in their shoes and understanding what they're actually start trying to solve. Hmm. All right. So um, I want to go back to the thing that you're using funnelytics. Yeah. So that's not, is that, is that by click funnels? No, this is a separate, um, let's see. Funnelytics is a separate entity. Um, click funnels, I'm sure they have a funnel mapping tool. Um, but everybody's got, everybody's doing funnel mapping today. They, you know, it's just a part if, if you've got like, if you've got, uh, an online 
operations suite that you do. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of options like this there. But ClickFunnels is is an option for building funnels. I think that a lot of people get stuck on it. The fat, um, thinking that it's the only option for building, building funnels. I, I got to say, man, ClickFunnels, um, I signed up for it for a while and I absolutely did not like it. Yeah, I, I it's uh, it's like any... It's too restrictive. It's you know, able- I'm, a, I'm an Elementor guy, so I mean, I... If you can go out and build a WordPress, like a WordPress funnel, that's a, it's going to, you're going to have so much more freedom. Right. Well, ClickFunnels is for somebody who needs to get funnels up. Don't, they don't really have a um, designer development background and they just can write their copy into and, and lightly modify the design of their page. And, and you know, I, I'm speaking in, in generalization here because there are people who, who do full, full design and development for their ClickFunnels pages. Um, but I see the benefit in ClickFunnels and for somebody who wants to build out a funnel like this on their own and doesn't have design resources, development resources, copywriting resources. They have kind of have to do all, all those things themselves. ClickFunnels is a good platform for them. You know, they pay hundred bucks a month and they get tools that are going to help them get all this stuff online and, and fairly quickly and make adjustments fairly quickly. If there's somebody like you who can go and do all that stuff themselves or somebody who like me who has a team who can do all this stuff, it's, you know, we, we tend to, we're, we're technology agnostic, but we tend not to use click funnels because it, we don't need that sort of resource. Sure. All right. So, but, but funnelytics, you keep saying funnel mapping. So, you know, I, I see something like that and I guess I assume just by looking at it, it's also doing the stuff for me. So i I assume when I see that, are you able to put that back up? Yeah. Uh, the image that you had up. So, cause I saw like, you know, you had emails in there. So I assume it's, you know, developing the, the email, you know, I'm, I'm using funnelytics to build the email, you know, make it look pretty and then send it to people. And, and I guess I don't understand why we would use something like funnelytics when we could go sign up for a tool like, um, drip or, yeah. uh, or one of these other ones where, where you actually get to build, uh, you know, and it, and it feels like you're building with a visual funnel thing just like this, but it's also doing the stuff. And that's a good point. So we typically, in order to do all of these things, it's multi-platform. Um, most of this is done in, in our CRM or the client CRM. So we have clients that use HubSpot. We have, um, you know, Infusionsoft or Marketo. You know, some of us. those those full marketing automation suites. Those you can do all of that, and this is just a visual representation of that. One of the benefits of Funnelytics and some of the other funnel mapping softwares is that you kind of you get to plug everything in and put in your predictions for for the various the the different variables that impact uh, outcomes for the for the funnel. Um, traffic and clicks and, um, you know, conversions and um, email opens and different, different things like that. So you, so you can predict the outcome of a funnel as you build it out. And like, it, it just helps you, helps you plan out your strategy before you have to build the funnel and, and make adjustments and, and see the, see the weak points in your funnel and strong points in your funnel. So that's, that's one of the benefits of a system like this. Um, it just, it helps it helps you visually map it out too, which is really hard for clients to understand. Like if I, if I didn't show people this, it's, it's just a lot of words and there's no, no visual representation. And for anybody who's a visual learner, this helps immensely. Like every, this is, this is just a, a basic template for us. Everybody, every campaign that we build, for example, we are, every funnel we build, we go ahead and create a custom you know, we, we map it out so that people understand exactly how their funnel works, exactly which moving parts are, are you know, are which, which go where and where they're involved in the whole process too. So because one of the things that we really need from our clients is, you know, we're, they're involved in that training or consulting offer. They're involved in delivering and engaging with their clients and they help, they need to understand uh, what happens before, what happens after, what happens if people take action, what happens if they don't. And so it, it helps them just visually represent every, every aspect of the funnel, which is 
to most people, a, a huge benefit. Awesome. So since there are so many of these um, marketing automation suites out there, and you've got this book that you're going to send me um, with, you know, here's, here's how to do it yourself. No offense. You're just not worth my time because you can't afford me. Uh, what tools do you recommend these smaller MSPs get started with? You know, are you going to say, you know, just, just start with, you know, MailChimp for your email or, or would you say, you know, maybe they should consider, you know, spending a hundred bucks a month for more of a all-inclusive thing? Well, when it comes to, so the nice thing about most of the clients I work with is that they're obviously tech savvy and they understand how to use technology, how to work, how to navigate through these platforms fairly, fairly well, or, or it can at least learn it fairly well. Like if I, mm-hmm. if I did it for other, other verticals, it may not be the case, but I have a CRM recommendation that is, I, I came from using HubSpot a lot in the past because it's very so user-friendly. expensive, very expensive, but there's a, there's a platform it's called engage Bay. Um, it's, it's at the highest level. I think it's 80. Let me, let me pull it up because it's here. I think it's $80 or something like that. Um, I just opened it up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not expensive, um, but it's, it's as robust. It's nearly as robust. It's not spot. Let's see. This is a yearly yeah, monthly. It's 80 bucks. So, you know, it's a, uh, and that's that you may not even need the $80 platform. You may be able to get by with 50 bucks. But the nice thing is that it gives you the same, um, a lot of the same opportunities that a platform like HubSpot or Marketo or any of the big, you know, Infusionsoft, any of the big CRMs, big uh, marketing automation suites do. But it's like, it's so, so, so much cheaper. So that's a good platform. Um, it lets you string it all together. It lets you uh, assign deal stages to different contacts that are coming in. Like it, you can use it for your marketing and your sales and it's the whole process from start to finish. So that's a good one. Um, and honestly, like if you've got stuff that you're using already, you can build, build off a funnel and basically anything like we we're just talking about. You can build it out on your WordPress website. You can build it out. Um, you can tie in MailChimp to WordPress and you can, you can stitch it all together with, with whatever you're using. Uh, it doesn't have to be so so pretty and cohesive, but if you're going to take it seriously, like making a fifty to eighty dollar investment in a in a tool set like this, it lets you do a lot. It lets you it, it really lets you automate a lot of your machine, so that once you build it out, as long as you have the right resources and understand how to run the ads and things like that, or if someone in your organization does, then all you have to do is deliver your offer and, and start the conversation with people. Very cool. Yeah. It's a good system. All right. So you, you've got a lot going on in that, in that funnel that you showed me and I love everything about it. And yeah. What, what else? Is there anything else that you, that you think people should hear right now are you, are you doing anything specific for the covid stuff i don't i don't want to talk about the ppp okay cuz i think everyone's <laughs> sick of hearing about the ppp i think the um, problem is so yeah. so are are you guys doing something to help us market uh, our msp to maybe essential businesses the, yeah and that's really the thing is that if if you were not marketing to essential businesses, be marketing to essential businesses. Like it's not, it's not that hard to understand. Like there are huge numbers of businesses that, that are still doing very well, that are still happy to pay your services, your, your, their monthly bills. They are, they're happy. They, and in a lot of cases, like, uh, we're seeing accounting firms, lawyers, you know, a lot of professional services businesses, they're doing more business now. If, you know, at, at least as much business as they were before, and they're, you know, we, we've, we've come up with campaigns around promoting remote work and things like that. But honestly, the ones that are still performing is the best are, are all the ones that were, um, you know, the security offers and the productivity offers, things like that. The things that you guys do already, they, people who 
people who um, are working with you already, they're going to be the ones that are reaching out to do to get remote support. They're going to be actively searching for IT support. So that's where like, um, you know, at bottom of the funnel campaign, bottom of the funnel keywords and things like that are going to apply where, but like, if you want to do this, this type of marketing where it's, you're, you're really reaching a wider audience, you can still do it. Just make sure that you're targeting businesses that are, that are still in business, that are still operating. And, and that's it. Like, I think a lot of people are really stuck right now. Like they're, they're afraid to take action because they don't think that people are going to be responsive. But I'm here to tell you that they are like people I'm, I'm watching MSPs grow their business every day. We're in a lot of, the, I think the same Facebook groups, you see these guys posting about their wins. I know that some, some of, uh, some of the people that I follow, they're, they're prompting people to talk about what they're doing and the business they're signing. And, you know, you still see guys signing tons of deals. Like they're, they're out there. You guys, it's just a matter of making sure that you're taking the right actions to reach them. And, and I'm not, I don't think that it's, uh, obviously you have to, to update your language a little bit. And if, if you're approaching a business with a, a loud and outlandish marketing claim, I think that that's going to be a little tone deaf, like come from a, come from a perspective of, of support and of helping businesses and making sure that everybody's, you know, getting, getting by and doing as best they can during a time right now. But honestly, like you can still, you can still be closing plenty of business right now. And I know lots of people are. There are um, smaller MSPs that maybe they've just been kind of stuck for a while. You know, maybe they've plateaued or maybe they've even lost money Mm -hmm. uh, recently what what would you say to them um especially like if if they keep working on i I like to call it indirect sales where you know they'll they'll go and and run like a i'm going to call it an ad but it might be an article that they paid to get in like a chamber of commerce or a newspaper or something in between um or maybe they're there's they're stuck working on their website because they think people are just going to magically land on the website. What, what do you say to those people that are too afraid to get out and try to actively sell things? That's a really, really good question. And honestly, I think we all have a little bit of that, like that fear to take action. I think mm-hmm. a, a very small percentage of us who are just like go getters all the time because sure even if it's just like, even if it's promoting yourself to people who will, you'll never see again, never hear again, or never actually meet face to face. It's still like you're putting yourself out there and there's, there's a psychological boundary we have to, or a psychological hurdle we have to overcome. But honestly, perfect is the enemy of good. Don't try to make everything perfect before like oh, get there and test it and, and refine your offering, refine your marketing message, refine your performance based on all of the things that all the feedback you're getting. And, and if you don't know how to do that, you can find, um, uh, I don't want to just throw out like Upwork because there's a lot of shitty marketers on Upwork too. But there really are, man. <laughs> like, you couldn't help like that on freelance sites. You know, if you go on to Upwork and you find people that have good reviews and you find people that have, um, you know, like they really sound like they know what they're talking about and other people have vetted them and, and like put them through the trial and error process. It's worth having an expert run your ads because they know what they're doing, even if it costs you a little bit more. And even if it's just having them set up your campaigns or something like that, and then you, you learn, uh, to, uh, how to optimize them, how to manage them, things like that. Cause Facebook has great resources. You can go on, what is it? Udemy, like all the, you know, there's, there's, the information industry has exploded. You can learn anything. And, and if it comes down to it and you need to run your own Facebook ads or you need to learn how to do your own marketing, you can do that in, in not very much time. You can, you can learn how you can take a course and be better prepared than 95% of marketers on Facebook right now, simply by just following like some really, um, really fundamental best practices and, and, you know, and not just throwing your ads online and saying, Oh, it didn't work. Well, I'm not going to do that again. Cause that, that's the kind of mentality that keeps you stuck. Yes. Um, 
I, I would say that I know a lot of guys that are stuck. They're always focused on perfection. I'm always telling them, stop, stop nitpicking every little, you know, phrase and adjective and everything else. It, it drives me up a wall. But, but more importantly, what do you tell them when they're afraid to just pick up the phone and call somebody? Oh, and is that even the, is that even an effective form of sales anymore? Because I imagine you know based on your funnel, well, it doesn't say just start randomly calling people. <laughs> so if you're if you are marketing uh, marketing adverse, if you just cannot get your head around marketing, and you feel like sales is the method, because I know a lot of businesses that have been built themselves to seven figures on the backs of of one guy doing mm -hmm. outbound, you know, there's, there's a lot of those that we started working with that, that I've come across. And it's basically, there's one guy out there doing outbound sales, hidden chamber meetings, like getting referrals. And I'm, I'm impressed by those guys because that takes a shit ton of work. Like you can't scale sales like you scale marketing. You can't just like up your budget and watch more leads come in. But you, you have to be out there pounding pavement. You can hire more salespeople. But honestly, if you're going to be a sales guy, understand how to sell like understand what it, the concept behind what we're doing here with marketing and what like what works in sales is really similar we're not people don't want to hear that you are the best msp in your industry or in your in your service area they want to hear what benefits they can get they want to hear they want some sort of upfront value they want some sort of um understanding like uh, oh they want you to provide them with a, a, a way to show your expertise and how they, how they'll benefit from working from you. So, um, it's, it's, I hear, I hear that a lot, Nick, and I gotta say, I, I find it more and more difficult, um, to really, to really, uh, help MSPs pass the, so what, phase of so so when when helping an msp develop their unique selling proposition man that is wobbly <laughs> um i find that they'll 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 go to oh well, we've got the best prices so what does that mean your service sucks you're just cheap yeah no no we 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 use this tool and that tool so what so does every other msp in town well, we're, you know, we're, we're the best because you get to work with me. That's what every other MSP says. You know, you're not sure you're a special snowflake, but that doesn't mean you're, you are better than all the others. So, so how do we, how do we actually get an MSP to come with, with their unique selling proposition? What is a unique selling proposition when, besides the definition, don't, don't screw around with us like that, but you know what I mean? <laughs> what, how, how do we, how do we come up with it, man? Cause I feel like, I feel like MSPs are so commoditized these days. I mean, you can go to any MSP and get the same damn thing. We all remote monitor. We all manage, we all upgrade, we all do projects. So why, why do I go to this guy's MSP? It's that's, that's exactly why we do what we do It's because if you can't show people the value of your services, then it's going to be really hard to, to sell them on it because they have their sales guard up. They're like, you know, so what, like you said. So that's, that's why we started doing things, reaching people earlier on, because unless people know they have a problem and they're actively seeking you out, it's really hard to get through the gatekeeper, get through the door and get yourself in front of them in a, in a position where they're actually going to listen to you. So if you, in any case, whether you're marketing or selling, you have to have some sort of value that you can provide them. Um, I know people that that take what we do, um, not not what we do, but they they have a variation of what we do in their sales process, where they're doing um, you know risk assessments and, and some sort of consulting. As it's a it's a consultative sales process. It's not just hey, I want to be your IT guy. I want to be I want to manage your IT services for a, or your IT program for a uh, set fee every month. Um, I want to help you, you know, I, all, all of the things that you list on your website, because you're right. Everybody's website is basically offering the same thing. Um, if it all, to me, it all comes down to either finding people before they have a problem or 
reaching people who are are either actively seeking or should be actively seeking based on the quality of their vendor. So I, a lot of MSPs that we work with, um, I don't, I, let's see, how do I put this? Um, they, they have a really good system of showcasing the greater, the higher level of value, even if they're more expensive of their services versus their competitors or competitor services. So like if you are an excellent service provider and you, you know that you are better than the vast majority of, of service providers in your area, or that you're at least like, you know, top level, then that's, that should be, you should be absolutely selling on quality versus, versus price. Because if you service, you know, if you're selling on price, then there's always going to be somebody cheaper and that's all they're going to care about. Nobody's going to look at anything else you do. But how do we, how do we say we're better than all the, all the other guys in the area? How, how do we actually prove that when we're doing our marketing? So that's a good point. That's where coming, that's where the, the face-to-face boots on the ground, person-to-person communication comes into play because it, it all boils down to some really simple fundamentals of marketing and sales. People buy from people. People don't buy from companies. People don't care about the company. People buy from the people that they're interacting interacting with within the company. So if you look at any good Google review, most of that, like for your MSP, for example, most of them will mention the tech or mention the team or mention the person who has helped them. Like so-and-so has been so supportive in, in uh, implementing Project X or in helping us with this issue. And that's been a... Um, Excuse me, that's on me. Uh, that's so. That's that's the fundamentals. If you have a person-to-person interaction, you're going to have the opportunity to get them to know, like, and trust you. And that's that's that goes. You know, you, you it doesn't matter what you sell, how you sell it. If they know, like, and trust you, they are so much more likely to buy from you than if you're just pushing your message, pushing your your services on them, like everybody else is. So that's why getting your foot in with something like the offers that I mentioned, um, getting your foot in with some sort of upfront value to let you showcase that that expertise is is absolutely mission critical. Because if you don't, then you're just like everybody else and you have just the same chances of everybody else is closing the deal. Love it. All right, Nick. Well, anything else that you want to go over before we wrap up? Let's see. I mean, that was that. That's the core of it. Like, I, I I want guys to to know that marketing is a because I see so much of it when I'm in Facebook groups and when I see it online. Like, so many people think that marketing is is witchcraft or or a scam or you know that they're they've thrown a lot of money at it and it hasn't worked for them. So which you know they they tell other people it won't work for you either. I want you to know that it can like um, it's like anything else in in your business. If you don't apply a considerable amount of resources and effort towards either learning it or hiring somebody else who knows how to do it, then yeah, you're going to get subpar results. That's just it's the name of the game. It's like anything else in your business. You have to put your energy and effort behind it. So for the smaller guys, that's probably going to mean learning how to market your business. Um, for the larger guys, that means probably hiring a dedicated internal marketer or, or outsourcing help. Like you can, you can find, like we talked about on Upwork, you can find some resources there. Um, you know, even if you have just one person who their sole role is marketing your business, they can help you organize all of those outsourcers. So you, you can, they can help find you a developer, a graphic designer, a copywriter, they can help you find a ads manager. They can do some of the stuff for you and they can take it all off your plate. But like, if you're not putting constant attention to it, then it's, it's just, it's like anything else. You're not going to get the return out of it. So I want you guys to know anybody who's watching, I want them to know that marketing is absolutely a, uh, can be a game changer for your business. Um, we've, we've helped, we've helped a lot of companies grow. Um, you know, grow considerably over the last few years. And, uh, and 
it, it's yeah that, that's that's my message i i just want to that's that's why i come on and do things like this because i i want people to believe in themselves and their ability to grow their businesses because i see a lot of people that get stuck like we're talking about and mm-hmm. and uh, there's no reason that you should be stuck you know you can scale marketing to the moon and and grow your business once you figure out what works awesome well, thank you so much, Nick. I really appreciate you hopping on here today. And please, anytime you want to return, you know how to reach me. Definitely. So I will, uh, I'll see you online on social media. Yeah. Thanks for watching everyone. Take Thanks. care. Take care, Steve.